Welcome to the evening worship hour at the Versailles Kentucky Church of Christ. We encourage you to be with us whenever you can. We will spend some time this evening worshiping in song and prayer and in listening to the Word of God and invite you to participate with us in all of those activities. We'll start by singing, O Thou Fount of Every Blessing. thought. spend some time in prayer. Rick, would you come and lead us in that prayer? Let's pray together. Dear Father, we humble ourselves before thee at this time, giving thanks for this day, giving thanks for we've been able to come together this morning and worship thee in spirit and truth, and now again this evening. We pray that you watch over this congregation as we try to worship in spirit and truth. 
and be pleasing before thee. Father, we're so grateful that you brought your son to this earth. And we've talked about that during this time of the year, but he came to this earth to save those that were lost, to take sins away from us, and was willing to go to the cross at Calvary that we could have forgiveness of sin. We give thanks for his blood we shed on that cross at Calvary that the church was established. We look at it as the Ark of the New Testament, a safe place, a safe place for the people on this earth to be, waiting for you, for his son, your son to come back again. And Father, we sit and wait and have a hope for that, whether we're in the grave or whether we're alive when he comes back. We pray that we'll be called to be with him forever and ever, where there'll be no pain and sorrow, and we'll live in a comfortable way with him spirit and truth. Father, we give thanks for our, our government, the, the state that we live in, the country we live in, to where we live in a free nation that we can worship thee in spirit and truth and stay out of harm's way. We give thanks for the soldiers that go out throughout this world, protects the interests of the, of the United States of America. Some of them give their lives for that. And some of their families do without because of the cause that happens there. Father, we give thanks for the workers, the first responders and the first front, front runners of this time of this epidemic that's going on, this pandemic, that things will be done that as it looks like it's starting to move in a more safe way than it has been. As throughout this whole year, we struggled as a church, we struggled as a nation. We pray that the vaccines that's been produced will Bring us out of this as people get the opportunity to take them and, and we can go away from this and have a safe place and safe an opportunity that our building will be open. We won't be wearing masks and we'll be sitting together and singing songs of praise thee and worship thee in spirit and truth. We look forward to that day. I thought we give thanks for all the blessings you've given us. Well, a lot of gifts were given this weekend. And a lot of people got to see each other that hadn't saw each other and go talk to each other. Maybe maybe it wasn't in person, but they were able to deal in time with each other and show their love for one another. We pray that that's year round. You loved us and we're to love one another just the same. And we pray that the things that we're doing that will in this community, that, the, that the, this community will look at the church that meets here as a good group of people that are safe, just safe people that will do things for you, that help you and will show love for our fellow neighbors and friends. Watch over us now as we get ready to start this service tonight. Derek will bring us another lesson like he did this morning. We pray the ears will be opened and we'll listen attentively. And the things he teaches us this night and he brings to us from the training he's had, the studies he's had, will go to our hearts. And as we depart this building, we'll be recognized as Christian wherever we might be. Watch over us now through the rest of this service. So I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. I did the Savior say
Good evening and thank you for joining us for our Sunday evening Bible study. We are continuing to work our way through Paul's letter to the Ephesians tonight. We are going to look at verses 15 and 16 of Ephesians chapter 6. But for context, let's read, uh, let's begin by reading verses 13 through 16. Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all, to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. When I think of the many battles we find in, in the Old Testament, all the stories that we have, uh, you know, one that, that just stands out among all to me is the story of a battle between a boy and a giant. Goliath was over nine feet tall, uh, around nine foot six to be exact. I mean, he, he was a giant among men. Uh, try and put that into context. Think about Wilt Chamberlain. Wilt Chamberlain was seven feet one, and he weighed, he weighed around 275 pounds. So to put that in Goliath, Goliath is, is over two feet taller than Wilt Chamberlain, and he, he had to wear at least, at least 400 pounds probably, and this was he was a big man, a giant among men. Samuel tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 5, that he had a helmet of bronze on his head. He was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze, 125 pounds worth of armor upon Goliath's body. His spear was like a weaver's rod, 14 feet in length. The spearhead itself weighed 600 shekels, verse 7. That's around... 15 pounds, if you've ever, uh, I haven't ever played it, but, you know, shot put, a college shot put, that ball would weigh around 15 pounds. Well, that's how heavy the spearhead was. So you think about seeing such a man on the battlefield in this armor with this spear. How would you fight him? How would you, how would you armor up to try and defeat such a monster? The army of Israel had no answer. Men were afraid of this giant. Saul was afraid. And here comes a boy, young David. He's, he's willing to go out there and face this giant. And Saul, it says in chapter 17, verses 38 and 39, says Saul clothed David in his own armor. And he put a helmet of bronze on his head and he clothed him with a coat of mail. And, and he gave David, he strapped his sword over his armor and David tried in vain to go for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot go with these for I have not tested them. And David put them off. Now, if, if Goliath was a giant among all these men, well, the next step down would be Saul because Saul himself, he was taller than most Israelites. If you go back and read Saul's story, it says from his shoulders upward, he was taller than any of the people. And so he put his armor upon this young boy, and it was too much. It was too heavy. If David had tried to go out and face Goliath, clothed in Saul's armor and with his weapon, he would have been a shish kebab. Goliath would have thrown that long spear and impaled the young boy because he couldn't move. The armor was too much. Now we know the rest of the story. David put the armor off. He went out in his shepherd's garment with his sling. He stopped and he picked up five smooth stones. And he went and surprised everybody that day, including a mighty giant. Why was David successful? Well, I think there's two reasons. One... I think he put aside the conventional armor that Saul tried to give him. He, he chose a weapon, an armor that was suitable for him to go out and have the best success at defeating Goliath. But the other one was he trusted in God over men. David put his faith 
in his creator. And that's a lesson that we should not waste uh, learning from. We fight an enemy today far more capable than Goliath. An enemy that would put fear in us if we could really see them. I mean, if we had 60 seconds, if God said, here's some, here's some rose, not rose, here's some demon-tinted glasses, and if you put these glasses on, you will be able to see those cosmic powers that Paul describes earlier. You'll be able to see those spiritual forces of evil that are standing ready to overtake you, to overwhelm you, to conquer you. If we could see that, we would be in great fear and we would do like David. We would, we would reject the conventional means of warfare and we would run to God as fast as we can and listen to Him for instruction on what we should have when we go to the battlefield. So as we go to Paul's words this evening, verses 15 and 16, he's describing two more pieces of the armor of God that every Christian needs. And we need these things if we're going to be victorious over the spiritual forces of evil. So let's listen to Paul's wisdom uh, tonight. Paul first begins with the boots, the shoes, the, the war boots that every Christian must put on. He's already said that we need to be girded up with the belt of truth, that we need to put on a, a breastplate of righteousness. And now in verse 15 he says, To stand firm and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Paul, uh, you know, he's, he's using that imagery from a Roman soldier. And so their, their boots were, were really half boots. They were called caligas. That's what a Roman legionnaire would wear in duty. It was an open-toed, you know, think of a sandal kind of like, but that sandal would go all the way up to your, past your ankles, to your shins, and there would be all these different straps that would hold that, that shoe on there, and it was studded with nails. It was almost like a cleat. And these shoes were, well, they weren't made for running. You, you, know, you couldn't really chase after the enemy. You couldn't run them down. You couldn't really escape from them either. They had a different purpose. Josephus tells the story of one Roman centurion who decided to chase after his enemy. But because he was wearing shoes that were, that were thickly uh, thudded, that were thickly studded with sharp nails, well, he slipped. And he fell backwards. And his enemy was able to execute that soldier. These boots served for marching and they served to help give a Roman soldier a, a, a clear footing. Uh, the, the, the best illustration I can give for today would be the, the cleats that a, that a, that a lineman wears. Uh, you know, football players, they have different shoes for the different positions. And so for the, for the offensive line, they've got these shoes that, you know, they're not going to be able to run 50 yards to score a touchdown. But they're going to be able to plant their feet and protect that quarterback and hold the line. So Paul, Paul is telling us that we are to have caliga, boots, shoes that are planted firmly in the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ. And if we are standing with the gospel at our feet, we will stand firm. We will not be able to be pushed back. We will be ready to meet the enemy head on. The gospel of peace. When I think about the gospel of peace, I think about the peace that first we have with God. When we are put on Christ in baptism, when we are transformed into Christians, we receive peace from God. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Every person longs for something. And when we think about it, a life apart from Jesus Christ, we don't really have any true peace. We're constantly searching for it. We're chasing after it. 
You know, we, we know that there's something in our lives that, are just, that just isn't right. And the world is there and the world has all these desires that, that want to try and fill that emptiness that we have. That you know, Something. And so people chase after whatever they can. They pursue it with, with, with desperation. They'll think, well, if, if I find the right spouse... Well, she's not the right one, so I'm going to go after this one. She's not the right one, so I'm going to go after this one. He's not the right one, so I'm going to go after that one. And they continue or trying to find something. Maybe it's money. I'll get this job, and I'll get this much money, and then I'll, I'll be at peace because all my bills are paid, and I can have all the things I want to have. And they get that, and then it's not there, and so they keep going after more. We do it with the accumulation of knowledge. Uh, trying different religions. I've got to find that peace through whatever means necessary, but the end result is always the same. It's this temporary relief. Peace from the world is a mirage that we continually chase after. But when we meet Jesus and the gospel changes our lives, we receive this peace that is just, it's just wonderful. It's calming. I mean, think about it. We find that our sins are forgiven. We find that we are reconciled to our Creator. We find that there is something more to this life. And so we are at peace. You ever feel relieved to know that your sins have been washed away? Have you ever thought, how, how just comforting it is to know that God is present in your life. He's a constant. And that God sees you as one of His faithful children. There's no enmity between you and God. But what is there between you and God? There is peace. And so with the gospel, you have peace. And so if our feet are, are shod with this kind of peace, then guess what? We can stand firm. We can stand with our feet planted when the enemy assaults us. When the devil comes at us, when those cosmic powers, those forces of evil attack us because we have peace with God, we can stand firm. But not only do we have the peace with God, we have the peace of God. You see, when we become Christians, not only does our relationship with God change, but He gives us Something that you can't find anywhere else. Uh, go back to, to John chapter 14. One of the final nights for Jesus on this earth. He's praying. And, and He says in John chapter 14 verses 25 through 27. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. The Helper, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things. And bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. What kind of peace Jesus? My peace. I give to you. I've never thought about that before. Go back and read verse 27 again. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your charts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Jesus gives us His personal peace. And what kind of peace is that? Well, go back to Mark chapter 8 when Jesus and His disciples get on that boat. And they go out to sea, and what happens? That great storm comes, and the waves are, are crashing over. The boat is being swamped, and where is Jesus? Asleep. He's asleep. That's the kind of peace that you and I have from the gospel. We have the kind of peace that, that allows us to, to, whatever storm comes before us, we can be at peace. It's the kind of peace that, that caused Pilate to, to get shook up when he interrogated Jesus, and Jesus is calm as a cucumber. That's the kind of peace that I have. Paul talks about this peace in Philippians chapter 4. He says, The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. When we have the peace, when we, when we know we have peace with God, and we have peace from God. His peace, His well-being, it, it literally garrisons 
Think about the word garrison. Garrison is this, is this uh, a garrison of soldiers. It was a, a building that guarded soldiers, a group of soldiers. It, it protected them. Well, God's peace garrisons His people. We are protected. And His peace surpasses all understanding. Whatever forces of evil comes before us, we are at peace because our peace is from God. It doesn't matter what moves the enemy makes, what they put before us, we are holding our ground because of peace. Going back to Paul's words to the Philippians, Paul says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Paul says we need that peace. We need the gospel. So, the armor of God. We have truth. We have righteousness. We have peace. We also need faith. Verse 16, In all circumstances, that's very important, in all circumstances, Paul says, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. All right, let's keep that Roman soldier motif in mind. A Roman shield was known as a scutum. I think I'm pronouncing it right. S C U T U M. And a this shield was well, it you know, I don't know if this is exactly four feet tall, but a Roman shield was about four feet tall and about two feet wide. So. Roundabout, you think of how big the front of this, this podium is. Well, a Roman shield was like that. It was like a door almost, a rectangular door that Romans would carry into battle. Spartans, Spartans would be charged. Spartan warriors would be charged before they go into battle to, to how, uh, of how valuable that shield was. The, the, the mothers would tell their sons, you take care of that shield. You take care that you return with it on your hand or that it's being used as your funeral carrier. That's how valuable that shield was. A Roman shield was, was two layers of, of wood that had been laminated. And it was covered with linen and with hides and then it had iron bound around it. And then it had a, maybe a decorative piece, uh, some kind of emblem on the front of that shield. The purpose of that shield was very clear. What could a Roman soldier do with that shield when these soldier, when these arrows were coming at it? He'd get right behind that shield. And those arrows might, might thud into it, but he was, he was protective. You, you've maybe seen movies with Roman soldiers, and I can't remember what the... Man, a, a phalanx maneuver... Uh, where you'd have a group of soldiers, of Roman soldiers, they would come together and they would lock those shields together in the front and then on top. And so as those arrows are raining down, they're able to keep moving forward into battle. They were protected. So keep that in mind. Paul is, is trying to get us to understand, you know, we're in a battle. And, and the devil... These, these evil spiritual forces are, are launching volleys of, of, of flaming arrows at us. And these arrows are, are representative of, of temptations, of lies, of deceptions, desires from the world. They're being rained down on us because, you know, these spiritual forces of evil, they, they want to see us fall. They want to destroy us. And so we, we bring up this shield of faith. And we are protected. We should think about what Paul says. Extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. What gets put before us? Temptation, deceitfulness, things that look appealing to the eye. Uh, you know, you think about that apple that was given to Eve. Look, 
It's, it's, it's pretty. And, and the words are spun in such a way that they're almost rational, that we put our guard down, that we don't allow our faith in God to supersede whatever it is that's been put before us. We don't listen to God's words and said we embrace what looks, what looks good, what looks nice. So we need this shield of faith. And our faith is in what? It's in God, right? It's in His, His Word. We have faith in that, and so that kind of is that, that barrier, that, that, that shield, that buffer, that defense between us and what is enticing but what is not good for us. Paul tells the, Th- the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus Christ. For this is the will of God, your sanctification. You abstain from sexual immora- immorality. You, you know how to control your body in holiness and honor. You do you not allow your body to be controlled in the passions of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, and that no one transgress and wrong his brother? The Lord is an adventure. The God has not called us for impurity, but for holiness. Therefore, disregard, whoever disregards this, disregards not man, but God. Philippians chapter 4, Paul tells the Philippians, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things and what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. So when we put our faith in, in those words and we heed those words, we can withstand those flaming darts that the devil is sending towards us. We can withstand the trials of life. You know, James tells us all things will come to those who are faithful. We'll have to deal with illness. We'll have to deal with tragedy, with persecution. And guess what? We live in a a world that has fallen. We live in a world where there are people who doubt God, who doubt His Word, who doubt His goodness, who doubt the truth of the Gospel. And how do we battle that? How do we defend against that? By faith. With a shield of faith. We hold that shield and and we look at things that happen and we say, you know what? Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. If we will hold firm with our faith in God and His Word, we will be able to deflect. Or with that faith, if we're believing in it, that faith will be able to deflect those fiery darts. You know, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that during a Christian's lifetime here on this earth, he will have hundreds, if not thousands, of blazing darts thrown at him by the devil. A constant volley And the only way to protect is with faith. The only way to be be victorious is with that shield of faith. The Apostle John said in 1 John chapter 5, For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. His commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. What's the last two words? Our faith. Faith is what binds us to our Lord. Faith is what allows us to put our trust in His Word. To rest in God. You know, I've, I'm, I've never been a soldier. The only, the only battles I've ever seen is in the video games that I play and the movies that I watch. And I can be wrong, but from that it looks like it's a, just a utter chaos on a battlefield. And people are dying. And blood is flowing. And the sky is filled with 
bullets, arrows? How do you survive? A Christian survives because they have a four by two shield of faith in front of them and above them. And they're standing by other Christians who are beside them who have that same shield in front of them and above them. And they endure. And when David battled Goliath, going back to that story, he was victorious, A, because he did not take Saul, what Saul says was the conventional way to win. You need all this armor, David. You need to take up this big sword and shield if you're going to have a chance. And David's like, no, I, I, I can't do that. David put his faith in God. How awesome is the Christian soldier who has girded up their armor with truth, who protects their heart with righteousness, who plants their shoes with the gospel of peace and picks up a shield of faith that soldier is at peace before God and with God. And as he stands on the battlefield and it's raging all around him, he can sing, it is well with my soul because of what he has on. And those arrows can come. Arrows of temptation, of sensuality, of trials, of jealousy, of criticism, of hypocrisy, of vanity. But he stands, she stands, victorious because of God and not because of their own doing. David's words to that Philistine giant, 1 Samuel chapter 17. Verses 45 through 47, David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. And this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and I will cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear. For the battle is to the Lord's, and He will give you into our hand. And with those words, David went at that Philistine giant with only his faith and a simple sling and five stones. David was victorious because of where he placed his faith. And that's where we should place our faith, faith as well. And the foundation that we stand on. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so, when the, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after having done everything, to stand. Would you bow with me as we close this evening? Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, thank you again for another day that you have given us to worship you. I pray that our worship this day was in accordance with your will, that the uh, words that have been spoken, the songs that have been sung, the prayers that have been led were well-pleasing to your ears and to your eyes and that uh, we have honored you with our worship, Father. Thank you for your Son and the forgiveness that comes through His precious blood, the reconciliation that Jesus brings to us uh, from You, and how through Christ we can have a right relationship with You, Father. Father, let us hear the words that You bring to us through inspired men, through the Apostle Paul, Father, as he instructs us to put on Your armor and pick up your shield and your sword so that we can be victorious against evil, Father. Help us to heed those words and to strive heartily to embrace all the many teachings that you have and to wrap ourselves in truth and righteousness, to stand firm on the gospel, Father, and to hold to our faith, knowing that with faith we, can be, we will be protected from all of the, the evil darts that come our way. 
Forgive us when we fall short, Lord. Help us to lean on each other for all things. Help us to help each other, Lord. Help us to keep our eyes looking forward to that glorious day where we can be reunited with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Read are the promises, kind is the word. Hear upon an any message man ever heard. Pure was the mind of Christ, sinless I see. He the great example is and pattern for me. be with us Wednesday evening at 7 when we study from God's Word together. And of course, we invite you to be back with us Sunday of next week. As we close, let's sing the first verse of My Faith Looks Up to Thee, and then we'll pray together. God, we give you thanks for your word that enlightens our hearts, encourages us when we're weak, and protects us in the faith. We pray that we will find strength for all the trials we face, all the temptations that come, and all the burdens we bear through your word and through the faith that grows out of it. Bless our congregation. Bless our country. We pray that the world be freed from this pandemic of COVID. In Jesus' name, amen.